Hello everyone. Uh, this is Anil here, and uh, welcome to the session. And hope everyone is safe and healthy. Um, just uh, make sure that um, to work out every day and be fit. This is the only way that we can fight this virus. We need a good immune to to fight this out, and also be more responsible. Be safe. So, Rajesh. Hi yeah, guys. Um, welcome again to all of, all the participants. And a really happy and a wonderful world uh, design day. Like, like Anil mentioned, uh, COVID-19 has been a blessing, I could say, in, in, in a lot, not many ways. Um, we have found that we have been more productive um, working from home. That's one of the plus points of COVID-19. It's a blessing in disguise. I wish all of you um, to stay safe, to stay at home. I also take care, most importantly, of those people who are probably out of jobs, they could be your mates, they could be your um, swiggy guy who runs around, just be a little more responsible that unless you need something, do not order unwanted. Yeah, so Anil, over to you to start the session. Thank you very much, Rajesh. Um, this topic is very close to my heart, different cultures, designing for different cultures. So while I was working in New Zealand, right, uh, we designed experiences for APAC region, that is New Zealand, Australia, and uh, the other um, countries around there. So we never had this challenge of designing for different cultures. So one interface and one experience worked across. But here in 2011, when I came back, um, selling design was really difficult. First is convincing, convincing uh, the product companies or even uh, uh, a startup to take a design first was really, really difficult. And when things picked up, when people realized uh, the importance of design, right, then that's when we started selling UX. So today we are selling the concept of research-driven design. So when I say research, it's very user-centric. Go meet users and validate all the features and functionality and validate all the business goals and see what works, what doesn't work, what are the things we need to keep in mind when we're designing a digital experience. So um, in the last eight years of running Lollipop, we have designed uh, many products, uh, be it Mintra, Swiggy, Paytm money or anything. Today, millions of people are using the product that we have designed so far. So we have traveled across, we have met people, we have met uh, people at the northern tip to the southern tip of the India. And what amazes me is uh, people are same. Um, some of the cultures defined their pattern towards uh, um, accessing some of the digital touch points. So can you go to the next slide? Yeah, this is the beauty of India. We have 22 major languages, 13 distinctive scripts, and eight major dance forms, and eight plus art forms, and two major music. And uh, as people joke about, right, we have a few million gods and goddesses here. So that we don't, I don't know if the number is right, but that's what Sadhguru and a uh, few people have told about how many million gods we have. We are all blessed with all these kind of numbers. But the beauty of this country is every 100 kilometers you travel, right, you see different people speaking different languages language, eating different food. And again, uh, the language is different. The script is different. That's the beauty of it. Now, with the kind of design first approach, with the kind of time we have, the kind of budget we have, can we cater one or can we design one interface that will work across India? So a couple of projects that we designed where we have learned. So today's session is all about what we learned while designing this project. When we traveled across India, met people, what did we learn from them? This is what we are going to share. And next, Rajesh is going to go in depth of how to craft an experience. Like what are the things you need to keep in mind in terms of the visual art and all this stuff. Rajesh, next slide. Okay, these are the folk lines uh, that I was closely involved. Um, I traveled along with the team for a couple of projects. Farm Rise is one project that is very close to our heart where we design an experience for farmers. Uh, that was a huge learning for us and Farm Rise won a lot of national and international awards for us. The latest one is Red Dot Award, which uh, the entire team is really proud of. And uh, when I started Lollipop, my intention was to put India on map because uh, back in New Zealand, we used, my boss and my company used to outsource a lot of uh, uh, development work to India and when I asked him why not look at India for design my boss said it's not ready yet so um, that's what got to me to come back and start Lollipop and today we have come a long way it's eight years of Lollipop and there's so many design studios and so many institutions and um, there's, there's such a strong ecosystem today we all talk about design and we have our 
like exploring different forms of uh, uh, creating a, a beautiful design for this country. So if you look at the products here, right, it has touched millions of people, millions of people, and people have started accepting digital, especially in the COVID situation, right? I was uh, like any other uh, founder, right? Uh, even I panicked. I panicked a lot about what is going to happen to the business and uh, what will happen to the design itself, and will there be any jobs and all this stuff. But the first two weeks, right, it's all about panic and everyone settling down at home and we're all coming to an acceptance that, okay, now we have to work from home. Uh, all this while we all thought design is such a collaborative thing. We all have to meet, discuss and be out in the field, meet the users, do live testing and all this stuff. Now we have constraints. Now we are working in a situation where uh, we are so dependent on the data, we are so dependent on uh, some of uh, the digital tools that we are using to connect with the users. So. The good news is um, there are a lot of industries are going to benefit from this situation and these industries are going to reach out to design to craft a beautiful experience. So it, is, it has already started, especially in um, uh, education space, right? Uh, I was quite surprised that uh, my kids go to a school where they, are on, they have only few digital touch points like attendance and notification. Apart from that, no lessons were online. So I'm, I'm sure that they are thinking of um, doing the entire education online now. And this has been something that uh, every uh, service company has been pushing education system, but nobody took it seriously. From, from here on, people will start considering it. So some of these industries, right, will come forward and they will, uh, they have to act really fast. Um, education, healthcare is one where a lot of uh, patient inputs, patient data was offline on papers. Now everything will move online. I know there are a lot of applications out there doing that, but um, many small and medium sized hospitals never took this seriously. Now is the time. Actually, to be honest, if you ask me what, just I did a session in the morning with students at UID and uh, UID students, uh, most of them had this very similar question. What will happen to design? What will happen to a career for designers? Uh, well, the only one statement I gave, amazing time for us. I think next coming uh, few months, few years, right, we'll have a great time. And uh, like any uh, situation, right, the best will survive, the multi-skill will survive. Okay. Anyways, coming back to this, learning from this project, right? With FarmRise, we interviewed close to 140 people. And uh, with Paytm Money, we were not on field so much. We did uh, meet a couple of users, but um, due to the time constraints and all the stuff, we uh, reduced uh, our research. With Walmart, we were on, um, we were traveled across India. And uh, with Oot was one very special project where we had to regionalize because uh, one of the biggest challenge this entertainment application has is content discovery. If you look at um, Netflix or Prime and all that, it works in city. It doesn't work in tier two and tier three. In tier two, tier three, it works for a tech savvy people, but non tech savvy people don't know how to find the content because most of the content they want to find it's in their local language, but the search works on English. And these are the challenges. And we do have voice and stuff, but voice has its own limitation. But I will tell you one nice joke and incident about voice later on. So these are the things. So with Woot, our challenge was to regionalize it, regionalize it by uh, implementing, um, uh, looking at uh, translation and transliteration, and also studying about the culture to see what kind of content we should produce and uh, what kind of graphics we should uh, produce for this content. So we did a little bit of an in-depth research on um, the culture and the design impact on the culture and how do we align, how do we study the culture and then align our designs accordingly. Okay, next slide. So um, the first thing is we went back, uh, there's always a learning, right? Um, like uh, if you look at what design is today, we have learned a lot of stuff from what design was in the past, like a poster design or a brochure and all this stuff. So though they might look a little outdated, but there's a lot of learning, especially when it comes to the aesthetics of designing, right? From a typography, from grid, from concept, they all the same. They're all the same. And even if you look at posters, old you know, posters, right? Like movie poster or any poster, right? There was some thought process gone beyond behind it while designing it. So basically, if, it, if you take a poster, right? It, there's a couple of seconds that people walk by the poster and you need to grab their attention. And what do you put there? How do you balance the visuals and all this stuff? So we went back to see what is that we can learn from other medium so that we can bring those learning into our uh, digital platform and see how we can craft a great experience. So one thing the, that amazes me is um, 
the ad industry. So Rajesh and myself, or I'll tell you a little bit of Rajesh and myself. And we both are classmates. We went to the same college, and he was in the ad world doing ads, and I was in the ad world doing digital. So I used to handle the Ogilvy and DVWA, and uh, Rajesh has created one of the best brands here in India, creating all these visuals that you see here. Okay, now going back to the ad world, right? Um, one brand that really amazes me is Kalyan. How they have got local celebrities to promote the product, so that the local people feel that this brand is local. So when we did the research, a lot of people in, in Tamil Nadu felt that by looking at the first two celebrities, they felt that this brand belongs to their state. And again, when you go back to the north, they felt that it belongs to their state. And even West Bengal uh, believed that it belongs to their state and uh, the similar. So there is a nice uh, strategy by um, that Kal the Kalyan jewelers put together to ensure that people feel that the brand is theirs. Exactly like Bata, right? The Bata shoes for a donkey's ears, I believe that Bata was an Indian brand. It is not an Indian brand. Just because they made it 90 rupees, 90 paisa or 99 rupees, right? We always feel there's 99 and 90 rupees, 95 paisa and all that. It is very Indian. And also Bata, we felt that ta in the end had that Indianness to it. We always felt that it is an Indian brand, but it is not an Indian brand. So this Bata brand, wherever they go, they study the culture, they study the geography, and then they promote the brand. What an interesting learning, right? So from there to ads world. Today, if you look at any ad, be it as simple as Arpic, or uh, Kalyan dwellers or anything, they are going deeper into understanding the culture, the state, the kind of people, what kind of background, what kind of who, which, which is the celebrity to bring, to evoke that emotion of owning the brand. So we learned a lot of stuff from that. So we collected um, um, uh, samples of ads that worked wonders here in India and also we went into the print medium um, and uh, we also looked at the entertainment space. Next slide, Raj. So we looked at what is that in entertainment space that touched a lot of people's heart by bringing all the state together. So Chakte India had uh, this movie is so beautiful uh, that uh, the country, if you look at the content, right, uh, they bought um, uh, 16 players together from uh, 16 states and uh, everyone felt nice about it because uh, Shah Rukh Khan movies work about the way it works because a lot of people there in South, right, they don't, they do not, uh, uh, especially in the Tire 2, Tire 3, though they don't understand Hindi, right, they watch for the celebrity. But this movie, I think it really touched their heart and uh, everyone connected to the content. Similarly, in the past, people tried bringing in uh, South heroes in the North and North heroes in the South for it to work. End of the day, it's business, right? They want to sell it. They want more people to look at it and the content has to become a hit. And this, I don't know what serial is this, Tarak Mehta or something like that. So this serial is a super duper hit because everybody watches. My mom is a big fan of the serial. She keeps watching it because there are a few South Indian characters in it. And I'm sure uh, this kind of a content works across India. So what in the entertainment industry, what people are doing, if you look at any movies, right, be it Bahubali or be it anything, right, uh, they are trying to see how to sell this content across by uh, localizing it, by bringing in that local flavor. Um, so again, there is some learning from the entertainment. We took learning from the ad world. We took learning from the entertainment space. Now we are moving forward to how to implement that in the digital space. Go to the next slide. So uh, regarding uh, farm raise, right? Um, farm raise and it's an application that we built for uh, farmers here in India. So one of the challenges that we had was um, the first question that uh, that uh, that came to our mind was uh, which farmer in India has a smartphone, and uh, how connected are they? Do they know to use a smartphone? Even if they know to use smart to know to use smartphone, do they know how to download an application? These are the questions. So when we got down to the field, we understood that, okay, there are certain farmers who can't afford smartphone. There are farmers who can afford this smartphone and the technology are five acres and above. So if you look at the culture, if you look at the geography, right, trust plays a very big important role here. Um, uh, like when we're doing the study, right, we were looking at what is that first technology that farmers implemented in their farming. So there's this person called uh, Raj, I would think, Raj, Rajan or something like that. So he came up with a device where you plug it to your pump set, right? 
uh, farmers have this farmland where they have uh, every day morning they have to let water inside their field. So what they do is farmers cycle all the way to their farmland, which is few kilometers, and uh, turn on the pump set, and the water goes into the field. Turn it off and come back. So this guy came up with a small device which is connected to the GPS, which has a SIM card. All you have to do is from your whatever phone, whether you have a smartphone or you have a pretty traditional phone, right? All you have to do is SMS water in and the water goes inside the field and what SMS water out and the water stops. As simple as this. So this was the first technology that a farmer was really excited and the, most of the farmers have implemented it. So we went there to test like how comfortable they were to use this kind of a technology. So when we went there, right? The, the, what shocked us is the farmers don't trust technology so easily. So one of the farmer after implementing this in the pump set, right? He was standing next to the pump set, sending the message to see if the water is coming out and again switching off to see if it works. He does that every day. There's a trust factor. He doesn't do that at the comfort of his house. He still cycles all the way to the farmland. He messages to see if the water goes up. He messages to see the water stops. Some of these behaviors, right? Um, it is so different from state to state, from culture to culture. So the same kind of a thing, if you go to Punjab, a little more advanced farming because uh, that state is exposed to the America and Canada of the world and people come back and there's so much learning from there and the farmers are, are ready to accept technology. They're exposed to it. So they, they are uh, you know, open to new technology. They were like, okay, fine. Now if this works, works and uh, let's sit at home, chill out, send an SMS for the water in, water out and all that. But when you come to the deep south, they were a little hesitant about using technology. So while doing the research, we met a couple of farmers and a few farmers had um, a smartphone. And uh, the most interesting part is they also had WhatsApp. Um, so some influencers helped them install WhatsApp and, and register on WhatsApp and all that. They showed how to use WhatsApp. Uh, the only thing in the last uh, one year or six months or two years of they using uh, WhatsApp, right? The only thing that they have done is every single day morning, they receive message of God or jokes or some kind of uh, entertainment videos, they watch that, they forward that. They have never ever sent any message, any text message to anyone. So these are the beauty of getting down to the field and understanding people. So now uh, when we ask the farmer about why have you not sent a message and like how difficult is it for you and all that is it? No, I'm not comfortable sending messages. I don't know the spelling and blah, blah, blah. All the things that you find out during the research. So what we did, we asked him to send a message. So the farmer tapped on the input area and the keyboard popped up. To get the keyboard down, to get the keyboard down, he restarted the phone. He didn't know how to get the keyboard down. So these are the interesting things. And this behavior changed across. So if you go to Punjab, it's different. If you come to the Gujarat, it's different. When you come to this part of the world, it's different. So uh, some of these farmings, right? It is so embedded in the culture. Some of the learning from the farmings has come from the ancestors and these things are passed on. So in between, when you try to bring in new, uh, anything new inside the farming, right? People are hesitant to accept it, be it technology or be it uh, new pesticide or be it new way of doing it. They are very hesitant. They think they're so associated farming with God. They don't change God overnight. So they're so associated with God and all this stuff. Another interesting uh, factor is, uh, now, if you look at uh, while designing Paytm money, right, uh, it's about mutual funds, trades and stock. So uh, if you look, if you go towards the Gujarat side, right, it is in their blood to to, to, uh, to uh, risk the money. Um, so people over there, that part of the world, they're like, uh, it is in their culture to, uh, to be an entrepreneur. Even if you look at their last names, it's all associated with the business they are doing, be it Topiwala, Skruwala, whatever it is. So it is so much associated with their uh, kind of work they do. Um, so uh, when to test an application like Paytm money or anything to, fin to do with fintech, right, it was much easier there. So people understood. Uh, they were trading offline. Now they're trading online. Now from online, they've come to you know, mobile apps. So it was easy transition for them. So basically they were, they themselves were asking easier way to uh, buy stocks, buy mutual funds and all that. The same thing if you come to the southern part of India, uh, 
some portion of southern part of india we are very service driven we uh, we we do not risk anything with the money we don't want to be entrepreneurs uh, we want to safeguard a job and uh, education is more important here and uh, with education comes um, uh, taking less risk and uh, playing it safe so here when we went to the tier 2 tier 3 um, um, towns right uh, people were not ready to take risk they were like no i'm not investing through a digital platform if i want to invest i'll take my cash walk to the bank and i'll put it in my savings and the bank guy knows me very well and i trust that fellow that he is not doing anything with my money and they gave me a chalan and i bring that chalan and um, i know for the fact that my money is safe they do not trust digital so easily so this has so much to do with the culture it has so much to do with uh, the history and all this stuff now again um, can you go to the next slide now we have a huge western influence of whatever is happening in the digital world right uh, like if you look at um, some of the things that uh, we have seen on our interface or even in offline or online world right there's a massive influence of the western world um, i traveled to china very often just 3 4 months back i was there and i don't have any virus i'm very safe but um, jokes apart um, but that part of the world right uh, they localize everything now if you look at mozilla firefox mozilla the international website is different from the chinese website it's so different and everything they cater it so that it works in that region and everything when i say everything uh, from website to mobile applications and uh, to uh, even the products right they have they alter it so that it works and the best part is they also alter the os the operating system of the phone android os is slightly altered to work in china because the character limitations and all the stuff right which rajesh is going to talk about so we need to be extremely careful about uh, what kind of uh, assets or what kind of uh, influence that we have from the western world especially uh, digital designers ui ux designers right sometimes we get really carried away with all the beautiful visuals that we come across on dribble and behance and we try to bring that here we build it and client is extremely happy with the beautiful looking interface when suddenly the business doesn't work it doesn't work in entire two tier three or people find it like what is this um, somewhere the tech and the design world appreciates but when it goes to the real user no one understands what it is especially in the first diagram that you see right uh, there is an image of piggy bank in the western and the european world this this is a sign of savings piggy bank is a sign of savings but if you come to this part of the world the pig is dirty for us and other uh, part of the uh, people right uh, uh, pig is illegal so why will you get such kind of an image to show save savings right now do you think it, this is the right kind of an image to show, show savings should we look at go back to the past go back to the history and look at what is our way of showing savings is there any other way of presenting a savings so a lot of bank applications i have seen that they use such kind of an icon they use the such kind of a imagery to show savings to india we have to be extremely cautious about what in what image and what kind of visuals we put and what does this what kind of uh, emotion does this evoke for users now coming to the next slide we have a uh, uh, click here so the click here right um, this is such a desktop experience right now uh, desktop websites had all this click here um, register now and all this stuff so click here is basically a call to action where you use a mouse to click on it um, so now uh, on a phone click here doesn't work it really doesn't work and now keep in mind in india this migration that is happening right the acceptance of uh, smartphones it's increasing by 68 or 70% something like that so if you look at the amount of uh, people here in india who's moving to smartphone they never experienced desktop they never used a mouse they never used any of the things that we use on a daily basis they have straight away come to the mobile on mobile using click here on mobile giving a desktop experience it really doesn't work so people get really scared when they see such things so we we'll have to localize the content so click here has to be localized click here should be more uh, humanized and uh, these are the things that we need to keep in mind then again when you come to the devices handset right i see a lot of design so beautiful so um, it has all the beautiful micro interactions animations and all the stuff but we forget that uh, here in india we still have handset and devices which is 1 gb ram or even lower than that uh, the displays are really small and they have multiple applications opened and uh, when you have so many things happening in the background right how will your animation work does it animate or does it flow 
so smooth as what you visualized it to be it doesn't so we need to keep in mind that from a traditional phone to a smartphone the migration has happened but people didn't go straight to the iPhones and uh, the Nexus 5 or the latest phones so they have come to the middle path where the phones are good the cameras are okay but the rams are not that okay they don't have space they were if you look at um, uh, one of the reason why people are not able to install applications is because they don't have space in their phone um, you know, because they have overloaded content they don't know how to delete uh, photographs they don't know how to delete uh, the media things that come from the whatsapp and all that because of that they are running out of the space and again now looking at uh, some of the western influence if you look at design right um they are we are all experimenting with design the entire design ecosystem right uh, we want something new so everyone is striving to uh, define what is next so what started with skeomorphic right um, when the mobile phones were launched skeomorphic was really big skeomorphic stands for real world examples um iphone calculator looked like a real calculator on the mobile app um and uh, even uh, your contact book looked real on the mobile app so it had that book and stitches and the buttons and the press and all that due to technology due to technology challenges and the implementation challenges right we simplified it we designers together got to um, um, as a community we simplified skeomorphic to a flat design that was a story between uh, skeomorphic and flat design skeomorphic was really difficult to implement flat design became easy flat design the entire design elements came within the code here this was completely graphic supported so when you came to flat design uh, the first uh, people who accepted flat design was all tech savvy people they understood but the when the actual test was done the people non tech savvy people didn't understand what it was they couldn't find out the difference between a box and a call to action so these are the challenges from there we move to material from material to we have move we are constantly changing the design so that our interface starts looking beautiful but somewhere people are stuck to the flat design still so we have gone to a far and we are now experimenting something new with the design so this kind of an experiment will cost the business for us designers it's great we love this kind of uh, challenges and we love to come up with new new design but when a product is aimed at uh, when the per product target market is across india right uh, new design new look and feel anything new right it has to be tested we have to test and see what is the impact on the business so um, as simple as this uh, so when um, amazon started right they had this yellow color uh, in the background this was a story that i came across on the internet and a lot of americans who used the website with yellow in the background this was those dialogue days and um, and uh, the, 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 then amazon realized that it's not good to have such a bright yellow in the background so they removed it as soon as they removed it right uh, amazon started receiving a lot of messages from people saying that the website is not working something is wrong amazon is not loading so they started writing handwritten letters to amazon saying that i don't think so amazon is same amazon has changed so they put back the yellow overnight you can't do such changes they put back the yellow and they wrote a beautiful script where in the next 3 months the yellow slowly faded off it came back to white and nobody realized it these are the beautiful experiments that people did they used the psychology here to um, update humans with new learnings so that's where design comes handy so that's where research research and all that uh, those things comes handy so farm rise we design keeping in mind that um, farmers uh cannot input data so whatever it is the entire application has to be on the tap keep tapping it and keep consuming the content now if we have to introduce something new we'll have to go back and see what is the impact on the business so some of these projects has given us a great insights about how um things work work across india so uh, these are the some some few few things that we have learned and uh, now I'll over to rajesh and rajesh is going to talk in depth about uh, our culture our fine art and how do we bring some of those aesthetics to work across india and uh, why we have taken only india as an example because we have designed experiences from middle east for arabic and all that but um, we have not seen a, a success rate as big as india in india the products that we have designed right we have seen it work across uh the cities towns and villages so we are yet to define uh, design and experience in middle east we have not done anything in chinese so maybe once we have such projects right we'll share 
designing for cultures across the globe now this is specific to india so over to you rajesh thank you so much and uh, i'm still online and i'll uh, answer all your questions after rajesh's presentation thank you very much thank you anil i hope everybody can hear me anil you can hear me right okay yes i can hear you rajesh it's clear okay fine so um participants again welcome back uh, to the second part of the session so i'm going to talk about how culture and visual arts have influenced uh, digital space if you look at design right the history of it it's not that you know you have you have um, fine arts as separate stuff and digital as separate stuff there are some restrictions there are some constraints that you have to work with it but broadly if you look at the aesthetics the color psychology the fonts and everything right so it's pretty much rooted and uh, if you happen to take this local flavors from the culture it is obviously going to be a good successful design so visual art in india right it's it's very diverse we are very proud to say that you know um, unity in diversity that is been one of our long standing slogans so every 100 kilometers the culture changes the food changes the language changes the way the people dress changes if you look at these sign boards even the painted ones that used to be 20 years 20 years back they all had different flavors you go to tamil nadu it's different you go to punjab or you go to uh, anywhere up north it's it's quite different even if you look at the temple architecture that india has even though the religion is pretty much the same but you can see the form how different it is be it the south indian gobrams what you see on the on the top left or it could be the kandariva madhyu temples or the temples which is predominantly towards the odisha side of things or the very recent akshardham that's in the bottom left or the most unique um, star shaped structure of the belur halebir on the bottom right so there is various various influences various kinds of forms and textures that people use when it comes to visual art in india one has to keep in mind all these things it's a very interesting research to be done you you can go to these places and most of these old temples you can find paintings inside we you can pick these nuances this is what should somehow translate into your digital design this is very very ubiquitous wherever you go at least down south if there is a festive time or if it is going to be pukalam in kerala or it's going to be diwali and rangoli uh, throughout india you will find these things you will find rangoli is everywhere you can understand the line the form the kind of motifs that is employed here and see if these can be some inspirations for you in your design visual art again um, a lot of them are tribal art very traditional art it could be the tanjore paintings or it could be the mysore paintings uh, the colors they use the forms that has been there the again motifs in every sari or every borders that you see or the the varli paintings or the gold paintings you can pick up so much of inspiration when you are going to design for something as local as india so design right it should you should always keep in mind that you are designing it for people at the end of the day it's going to be the user who's going to interact with the screen right um we could have our methodologies we could have our psychologies and aesthetics and etc etc they are all focused for only one purpose the purpose is to design for people and make sure whatever you design is easy to consume and easy to interact with that is the core of uh, the design and uh, what's the core of again culture the core of culture is again people if there are no a group of people there is no culture right it is essential that people are present for cultures to form so design for people right when you say design for people if you look at the the general population of india right somewhere around 15 to 20% are staying in the urban areas the rest 75 to 80% are all in the rural areas now when we are designing until now though uh, though technology is is very predominant in the urban Sorry, the rural, sorry, the urban areas. What happens is business is spread now. Now the penetration of smartphone users has gone to tire to. I don't see a village where there are there are no smartphones. There are smartphone users, 
data yes still debatable it may not be that fast as as fast as in the urban areas but there is a reach if there is a reach where india will become the highest highest consumer of of digital data right and video consumption is going to go up by 72% from from wherever it is right now i think by 2020 it was predicted back two years back that uh, india will have a 72% usage in terms of video data consumption now if this being the case the consumption is already spread into the rural parts of india now if we do not enable these people to use the digital platforms then your penetration and your business is going to suffer so you will have to design it for those people who are in the rural areas also right now what products we design that's a debatable question but we need to include them in this ecosystem and when we are including those people into this ecosystem right culture plays a lot of importance so local is the new global so when you are designing right even before you design you understand who the user is what we all know the importance of a user persona but we do not understand uh, probably very in depth of that person's culture that person's upbringing that region specific things like color or or an art specific to that region if you are trying to do something for that particular product for example when we spoke about uh, farm rice is very very important to understand what their culture is how their day to day life is right they will be seeing green color more than us they are there in the fields they are there in the rural areas so there should be certain things of colors which should be reminiscent of their everyday life how do you bring that in, in case if you uh, for in fact if you look at the farm rice right the predominant color is green that's why we went about saying that it has to be green there was no debate about it we have to use green because they are used to seeing green so much in their life right and look for inspiration in culture example again the same green thing that i spoke about for farm rice these are the things that we need to look for and then go about looking for what what are the elements that make a design and then same elements how they represent in different cultures it could be colors it could be shapes patterns it could be typeface and imagery right so moving on so what are the visual elements that i will be uh, highlighting upon and giving you a few tips so that it, uh, the design comes out the way it is intended to be for a particular culture or a region so uh, though it is not the domain of a designer language and translation should be always borne in mind because they take considerable amount of screen space right if there are no words if just images are there then i don't think so uh, you going to communicate that easily you will have to have text text definitely communicates when that is the case it is very important that you take care of what the language that you are designing for and how translation works there <clears throat> i'll tell you in detail about what uh, points to look for in in language and translation in coming slides second is typography and scripts of course we all know the importance of typography and scripts let's imagine if you're doing for japan or chinese the entire the entire typography style changes there so it, it's again a very important component of design color psychology is very important um, though there is there is a universality of usage of color in certain in certain particular cultures we don't we have to avoid a certain certain colors again those examples i will take you through um how you can include the local flavor patterns the motifs the icons and illustrations all this all these are very important to look at the traditional art that that they have imagery and lifestyle is another important aspect because i think um, imagery is 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 nothing but a moment frozen and you have to be very very careful what you are trying to show what could be just a passing moment now it's frozen and and it's as an image so be very careful when what you are trying to depict and is it is it suitable for that region or not and if you take all the above uh, pieces all the above elements and then you begin to develop your layout and how you compose things so language and translation okay one of the things that you know whenever uh, <clears throat> whenever there is any kind of presentation i come from a print background so whenever a client gives uh, let's say a brochure design for example 
what the first thing I do was I take that page which has got too much of content, too much of characters and words and paragraphs. I take that, let's say it's an eight page brochure. I take maybe the sixth page which has got the most of content and design that page first. Because I know the other pages are going to be based on this. I can have fancy pages in the beginning, but as I develop the design, I come to the sixth page when there is so much content, my design will break. So it's very important to understand which is your screen where there could be more content, right? And when there's a, more, a lot of content there, you should make sure you try and use as least a number of characters as possible. Why? Because I think every language, every script has its own width of characters, its own height of characters. You should be aware of that. Then we must be aware of different scripts that uh, we are trying to localize. For example, if you look at uh, Canada in, um, in, in India, right, you have those small things that hang below the main characters called Urdu. So it is, it is something which is hanging. If you look at um, um, Hindi, you have the matras that's coming up, right? Which is not, which is not at all a part of uh, language in English, but in India it is. So we need to, we need to understand the X height and the line height of each of the, uh, each of the uh, uh, language characters. How you, how you go about doing good? I have a small tip which I frequently use, and there is also translations uh, which could be longer. In, in a particular language, you might say something you want to convey using say four words. In another language, it could become six or seven words. So then again, the space goes for a toss. So here are a few examples. I gave you an example of, you know, design for least number of characters and keep what you want to communicate very, very crisp. If you look here, if you see this topmost field, you have a thing which says, please type your name here. Right. The same thing in German is longer, whereas when it comes to Hindi, it is much shorter. And even I kept the font size same, but the font size of Hindi is much smaller. We need to keep these things in mind. So how do I make sure that when I design that this number of characters don't extend beyond the input box that is there? So let's say if I rewrite this, please type your name here as just your name. And then you see what happens in Germany and you see what happens in, in Hindi. They are all much, much smaller. Even if it is for whatever uh, reason, much longer, they can definitely be accommodated. So this thing demonstrates how to design for least number of characters, how to take care of the different font sizes. Even the font size is the same that the, the typeface differs. The height of the type is the width of the typeface differs there. Uh, we are all very familiar, those iPhone users who are using are very familiar with the bottom screen. It's when you start the iPhone for the first time or you install the iOS for the first time. You can always see these words, right? Hello, hola, bonjour, and meow. The reason I'm showing this is you look at the number of characters used in, in different languages. And even if you um, transliterate the last one, which is, in, which is in China, it's made of two words. So hello is one word elsewhere, maybe it is in two words in China. So we need to accommodate all this in mind. We should, we should think about all these factors when we are designing with type for various cultures. So moving on, um, this is something which, which, which is good because it makes um, a form feeling very conversational. And it is, so it's really easy, it's not to read it, right? So do not place UI elements within text. For example, if there is a line which says, I would like to transfer, and there's an input box, and then the sentence continues says to my friend, right? I would like to transfer this hundred to my friend. If I have to translate this in Tamil, right? It's entirely different. The order of words is completely reversed. Here, friend comes first in Tamil, and then it goes on to continue. So the text box moves. This is a nightmare for a developer, and, and nobody knows if it will, it will suit every scenario. Right? This is best as a designer to avoid this scenario altogether. What would you want to do? Change the entire way you address things. Keep it very simple. Don't make it too fancy. <clears throat> it may be very simple to say how much would you like to transfer to your friend. But it works. It works across any language. It's very simple here. Text here is on the left. 
the input field is on the right. So this takes care of any scenario. So basically, you are you are in a way designing for scalability in different cultures, which is important. And keep paragraph text scalable. This is again um, something we need to keep in mind. Imagine you are doing, um, you, are, you are having a mobile screen. We are describing, let's say, uh, food uh, or some kind of a review about a food. We have to make sure in our design there is a scalable space at the bottom. So if you look at it, there is this has got enough of scalable space at the bottom. I have taken English at 19 points, Tamil at 19 points, again German at 19 points. And you can clearly see the different heights of these paragraph texts. So keep in mind that you provide for scalability in your, in your design, especially when it comes to typography. Moving on, let's move on to um, how color plays an important role. There is, there is no doubt um, color is one of the most integral part of any design. Okay, uh, do a research and try and understand different cultures have different meanings for colors, right? What is red in one particular land is a different meaning in another part of the world. So understand what the different cultures and colors relate to. There are certain universal uh, colors like for red for danger, it is accepted universally that it is red for danger, yellow for caution, green for acceptance, gay TV. Uh, okay or submit or, or things like that and also be, uh, be aware of the negative uh, colors and cultures for example generally in, uh, in India right now come across so many designers though uh, though black is one of my favorite colors uh, when I try to use black in any of the logos or any branding immediately it, it, it's good people say no 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 it's a, it's a bad woman to have black as my brand color and people stay out generally in India so understand what are negative colors in a culture? What do they represent and how to avoid using them? Okay. And colors have emotional value. Um, there, is, there, is, there is a global understanding of, of uh, color and uh, equating the color to an emotion. But there, there is again difference there. We need to understand um, that difference, that it need not be the same thing for different, uh, different countries and cultures. So here, if you look at it, uh, I've taken red as a, as a color, for example. If you look at the Western world, if you look at the, um, uh, the, the communist countries and stuff like that, right? Red means revolt. It means anger or danger, right? But when you look at um, the, the, the Chinese side of things, their culture, red means positivity. It means prosperity. It means happiness. So if you just blindly type Chinese New Year in Google and do an image search, you will find a lot of images in red, a lot of creatives are in red. And if you type similarly at the same Google, if you say uh, posters on revolution, you will only find a lot of red based posters. So this is the difference between one color, meaning two different things in two different cultures. So we need to be aware of this. We need to be aware in our usage of colors. So I spoke about the universality of colors. Again, green is something which is which is positive, which is acceptance, which is okay. It could be it is, it is used predominantly for submit and yes, and people understand it. Irrespective of languages and culture, people understand that you know these are universal colors. Red is for cancel, you no, know, you know, to reject or error messages, right? And gray has been used as a neutral color for being inactive or uh, yeah, so in active states. So this is, there is also uh, this universality of colors we need to understand as we design. And make sure we don't um, replace these colors for something else. You can't have a purple submit or something which will not really make sense. So be very careful about not uh, trying to reinvent design when some things are very given. So if you look at how colors uh, influence design, right? The, the, going back to um, an old design and then let's come back to a digital space, how would things work? So if you look at this poster, right, on the, on the left, I have two small pieces here, with, which are pretty old. And this one is a recent one, but the one above the poster, here is an ancient old um, retro style poster. 
and I've picked colors and forms from here and implemented in a screen for uh, online uh, food uh, application, something like Swiggy. So you can see how uh, a particular culture's form and color influence even the digital taste today, right? If you look at this on the right side, I have the same food application, but designed for Indian market. Now, if you look at Indian market, let's look at the vegetables, mostly green. And let's look at India's known for spices. You look at the spice here and then pick colors from these two images and then design it. And the motif behind it. Everything looks Indian. This is very Chinese looking, this is very Indian looking. But the platform is the same, the same food application, right? Food delivery application. So this is how you look at inspirations for uh, in, in local um, culture. So if, you, if I go by this example, uh, nature influences a lot. Nature influences a lot to do with some, some particular region's culture. It has got to do with this. In, in the case of India, it is the spices, it's the kind of vegetables we have. Somehow these, far, these things have found their way into our culture. Moving on, we'll talk about typography and script. So to understand how much space, I have told you that you can use Google Translation. I will show you the, the, what I've done here in the next screen. And look for characters that are unique in a language, yes. And choose fonts, which is web optimized and browser friendly. This is very important when you're designing for different cultures. Make sure they, the, they do have fonts, but many of them are not really web optimized. So we need to be very uh, sure to pick web optimized and browser friendly fonts. Um, Google Fonts is a good resource where they have tested all this stuff. So, and they have, they have statistics of that particular uh, font. So then there is no chance of going wrong. Uh, when designing for a multi-language also do look for what fonts will support. For example, um, um, Poppins right in Google font has, has Devanagari Hindi script, also English script. The beauty is those scripts match the way they appear, look and feel, they match. So make sure that even uh, when you're choosing a set of fonts and you are going for a localization, other language fonts are matching to your parent or primary font. So this is what I uh, generally do when it comes to accommodating a particular uh, text, right? Now, if you see on the left, this is this is an English English text, right? It takes this much of space, the same font size, and in Hindi it takes this much of space, right? So now I can understand that you know when I'm designing uh, for for a for an application where I'm giving the, um, a toggle for language, I can either choose my language to be English or Hindi then I will understand how much content I can fill. As a designer, I can tell the content writer that this is the space I have, this is the real estate I have, and this particular exercise will help you, okay? And I mentioned about certain characters like this small swoosh here and this piece here. This is very unique to, uh, very unique to Canada. So you will have to make sure the leading that you provide is sufficient enough to accommodate this. Again, very specific to a language, but I think it's it is the designer's responsibility to consider these nuances. These are these are pretty much uh, guidelines that every every language will have, and there are just a few about five to six that you need to look for. But it is very important that you look for. Again, when I mentioned Poppins, right? So this is what is the Hindi uh, font of Poppins. The same thing in English. You can see the similarity in design in terms of height, in terms of the typeface uh, weight, everything is very, very matching to these two. So make sure when you are designing for multi-language applications, you choose a font which has got enough languages. In India, at least the metro, uh, predominantly all the languages of the metro should be present in that. So patterns and uh, motives, right? So. Uh, Patterns and motives are found way into design long before icons. <clears throat> uh, be it the temple architecture, be it your uh, manuscripts, right? Be it your clothing. You, know, you can look at uh, the saris of India, right? You have so many motives in them. So what I did as an exercise here is I've taken a very simple title of a book. It's called Handbook of Motives from Around the World. But I have not mentioned 
which region it belongs to. For example, the one that is there on the left, I have not mentioned uh, this handbook uh, is going to feature what motifs. Obviously, it is from the Islamic world. So we know just by looking at this particular motif that this book has a flavor of Islamic motifs containing inside the, as a content. When I move on to the next one, I can see this is a part of a sari. These motifs are basically Indian. So this book is going to contain motifs from the from India. This very look again makes you think of Chinese. <coughs> You're right. It belongs to uh, uh, the motifs belong to the Chinese uh, culture, and then this book is going to be about that. The one on the extreme uh, right is taken from a fabric. It is from the um, Scott. Whenever you think of a, of a bagpipe, uh, you know that frock is always made of this particular texture. Um, we may have not consciously looked at it, but it is there, there in the subconscious. So if you have to look at motifs to be designed for the Scottish world, then this is a very apt cover page design. So throughout, uh, if you have to give a local flavor, if you have to bring in culture into your design, look at what has been traditionally done. And the religious art is one of the uh, primary source that we can look at for inspiration. There are so many um, uh, art that is being uh, done through religious uh, activities. So that is another rich source of inspiration for all the motifs. So this motifs and patterns, right? These things can be incorporated when we are designing icons and illustrations. We can pick inspiration from here and craft our icons and illustrations with these kind of nuances picked. That will make it very specific to that particular religion, uh, culture. Sorry. So then moving on, we have, uh, we have imagery and lifestyle. I was mentioning about how to use relevant imagery, right? It's very sensitive. The topic is very, very, very uh, sensitive. We have to be very conscious when you're choosing and using imagery. Um, like I mentioned, it is it is something which is frozen. Uh, it's a, it's a live thing which is frozen for a forever, right? That's what a photograph is. And you have to make sure that you use you use imagery which doesn't which is not offensive, which doesn't um, create a controversy. Okay. And uh, one more most important thing is always make sure the image and content go hand in hand. We should not have images which do not have anything related to the content. Then the whole design itself fails. Okay. The third thing is when you're using an image, we are be, uh, very much aware of the sentiments of the region and culture. Um, let's take, for example, uh, the niqab, right? What, what, what is one of the Islamic world? If you have to show a woman which was not clad in her, uh, in her veil, then you, you're going to uh, make something controversial out of it. So understand people's sentiments of music culture and then design accordingly. Uh, nudity, posture, the kind of attire a person wears, the kind of gesture in the image that they display should all be, uh, should, should all be taken into consideration when you're depicting imagery. And at last, uh, respect local culture. You need to, we need to as a designer take this responsibility that there is, there is of course creative freedom and creative expression, but then also be responsible. Also be responsible not to start something on the wrong foot just because you want to do it without any proper, proper rational or a base to it. So uh, respect the culture and then when you're designing, make sure you don't, you don't upset anybody. So I was talking to you about uh, the discrepancy between line and uh, copy and, uh, and, and uh, the image, right? Now, Kumbakonam filter coffee, everybody knows filter coffee belongs to South. But if you're going to use a Sardar's image there and say Zama makes best filter coffee, it's not going to do well. well. It's not going to work well at all. People are wondering, it's very inappropriate to use that image here for this line. Or change the line to something else. So here again, you need to make sure that you have the right image, right? Now here you're talking about money's chicken biryani, for example, and you're saying it's everybody's favorite biryani, right? Again, very inappropriate image. You're, you're showing a person who's, who's by choice and by birth uh, a vegetarian, and then you're trying to depict it this way. Just because you want to say that it is also his favorite, 
that's being irresponsible as a designer so be careful when when you are choosing image and depicting with content they need to correlate and also you should not offend anybody so we want to lay out on composition um, every culture has a, a visual hierarchy <clears throat> we can look at their um, their illustrations their art their calligraphic scrolls and understand what is their hierarchy and accordingly we can design so then one more important factor is understanding the reading patterns um predominantly we have a left to right reading pattern we have in the arabic countries a right to left and in some of the south um, east asian countries we have a top to bottom reading pattern so these patterns uh, if you if you are designing for for such a wide audience such a global audience you have to keep in mind i'm sure you'll collaborate with local designers from each of the region but keep in mind if you are a designer that how these things will work and uh, be careful in flipping images one of the uh, easy way to work from left to right and converting it to a right to left is to mirror the whole thing um, out of habit just don't flip the images like for example we all in india know that we eat with the right hand and if there is an image which is showing a person eating in right hand in the left to right uh, pattern and then you want to convert it to right to left so you just flip the image you are showing the person eating with the left hand which is which is abroad in india so um, just don't go blindly and do about uh, flipping images make sure i have faced these issues when uh, i mean i designed things for uh, a jewelry brand and uh, the 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 woman uh, the woman was wearing a sari and uh, the layout was such composed that you know the text is on the left and the woman is on the right for some reason it was not going well if the text was on the other side then it would have fit better so i just flipped the image without understanding uh, you know how a sari is worn so sari is worn with the pallu on the on the right side not on the left so but when you flip the image the whole thing changes and the ladies look at it like what is she is wearing the thing whole thing wrong she didn't realize that i flipped it so be very careful when when flipping images um the last thing here is study local art before you design it's very exciting it's really exciting i am a person who loves to go to history and read about stuff and read about the uh, history of design how it came about it's always a revolt if you look at the the first while uh, uh, the, the designs that that is there they are always being born out of a revolt <clears throat> because of religious unrest and stuff like that there always been a very revolting reason for designs to come up so study all the local arts uh, look at what what is the design comprising it makes your job very easy it's so easy after that to make a design which will connect to those locals you are designing for so some of the elements that i mentioned right top to bottom um, and um, uh, right to left orientation <clears throat> these are two screens for a mobile application one obviously belongs to south eastern Uh, Southeast Asian country. The other belongs to the Middle East. So, but you see how design has been adapted. How the whole gesture changes. Right to left swipe. Sorry, left to right swipe is now right to left. Things move a lot. So be careful about all these things when you're designing. Understand beforehand when you begin to design for multicultural platforms. Now, where do you look for inspirations? Um, it's it's nice to have. Um, in, Okay, there there is Behance, there is there is Dribble, and there is there's a plethora of uh, source for inspiration. But when it comes to designing for local uh, groups of people or, or or an application which is pretty local, let's say farm rice, pretty much to the uh, farmer community. Why will anybody in the urban world use farm rice? It's purely for them. <clears throat> so in those kind of situations, how do you go about looking? Where do you look for inspirations? And <clears throat> you cannot look at Behance and uh, And, and rebel and rely on their things. Look at that particular culture. Look at that particular populace and see what um, what inspires. Right. Let's look at let's look at inspirations in architecture, their own performing and visual arts. There is n number of tribal art, uh, folk art, and stuff like that. Look at their attire. So it will give you an understanding of where to pick colors and patterns and motifs and icons from. Look at their language. Maybe they have a beautiful calligraphy. Maybe they have a beautiful script that the way it's written. 
we can take those nuances of script and use it. <clears throat> Look at the graphic design advertisements of that particular world. So when 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 economy turned um, um, to a largely industrialized uh, world. Um, how do you still localize? If you look at, if you if you remember the tiger bombs and other uh, other oils from China, they have a particular way they are they are being designed, right? They are more red and green and gold. <clears throat> so even before this this tiger bomb could become a, a global product, even before that, the Chinese already had it. The Chinese had it for a local market, and the same thing carried over. And now it has become almost an icon, right? If you have to have look at a Chinese brand, right? You expect red and gold there somehow to be featuring. So these are the things that we need to look for: graphic design and advertisements of the SDOs, how they have how they have uh, utilized local flavors into it. Look at the festivals and rituals that each of these people do. <clears throat> like I showed you, the Chinese New Year, uh, predominantly again red and gold. So that's that's another source, and of course the North. But uh, last but not the least, it's the cuisine. The cuisine has an elaborate uh, uh, thing to color the way they they fashion their stuff. So I was talking about um, their their art, right? If you look at uh, from the different parts of the world, I've gathered it, and largely from India, I've gathered it. You can look at the Sistine Chapel, the way they have fashioned their colors, their forms, their images. And uh, on the right side, I have something from a from a wall fresco from one of the very ancient temples, eighth uh, century temple from Madurai, right? So there, how, what colors they are used, the line again there, the, the the how the headgear is is designed, the motif from there. The bottom left, I not mention it is the Bodhisattva image from Ajanta Ellora. Again, colors color wise, you can see the difference. Same same land, same India, right? But this is different from this. And in between, you can see the Buddhist tanka paintings, right? The whole palette is very different. It's very distinctive. Tomorrow, if you have to do something to do with, uh, let's say, for design an app for a uh, for 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 a Buddhist, uh, you know, something, some some Buddhist based thing, right? Some Buddhist based meditation app, let's say. These colors will place perfectly there. I mean, this is what we need to pick up, right? There's nothing to look beyond that. And uh, if you look at uh, Taj Mahal and this inlay, right, inlay work, where you have the beautiful colors again and the motifs, this this can become again a, a basic pattern for something which is very mobile. We can take inspiration from here. So these are the visual inspirations that we can pick. I was mentioning to you about local art, right? So this is from an African local art. <clears throat> Uh, immediately, you can figure out the color palette here. It's a beautifully balanced palette. Pick the colors from here, and your color palette is done for any application or website. Similarly, here for for Chinese-based stuff that you want to pick. This is again for very vibrant uh, Mysore painting. You have the miniature painting of India. Suddenly, you go all the way back to the Renaissance period with the Starry Night from Van Gogh. The the vibrancy of this, the stark contrast that they have. I can come back to the Swahili land of Africa. So this is again uh, how you can pick colors, forms, textures from local art. Calligraphy has always been a strong point. So uh, look at calligraphy works uh, along with art. It's wonderful to have uh, the Chinese the way they depict their stuff in the and calligraphy, and of course. Um, Islam calligraphy is so advanced and so beautiful. It really, it's really mesmerizing to look at it. So these are the sources of inspiration where you can look. And this itself gives a beautiful palette. The whole palette of a background color, of a primary color, your secondary palette, everything is fixed here. Typography, you know how to look for all those nuances in a particular type. So this one piece can serve your entire application. You can pick your entire application's design. On this, yeah. So I think uh, we are the last slide I tried um, uh, yeah, some time back when we were featuring to um, go back to go open business in Dubai. Uh, we are exploring how lollipop can be can be depicted in a local flavor. So I designed this uh, fashioned on a particular Arabic font, but it reads in English lollipop. So that's it, folks. Um, Points to take out, 
do your research understand your user get to the local cultures and uh, and and see there are a lot of source of inspiration for design pick them up and then come and start design your stuff okay thank you um, i hope you all stay safe uh, you get better we get back to our working spaces as quickly as possible and meet our family friends and colleagues okay that i end the session thank you Thank you so much, Rajesh. Yeah. Okay, so um, we are open for question and answers now, guys. Um, I already have a couple of questions that has come up uh, while the uh, while uh, Anil and uh, Rajesh was still presenting. So I'll start one by one, um, and uh, you can um, start answering them. So our first question is. Um, the research we are talking about is pretty in depth. How can we execute the same in a fast delivery environment? Um, Rajesh. So it's a I can research, take right? it up. Yeah, I mean, pick it up. Okay. Um, I know we designers are not blessed with the research timings. So it's always the last minute thing that we do. Um, so what we uh, do at Lollipop is we go by our previous uh, or a past project research data and uh, build on assumptions. So the two ways of building a product, one is research, build and test or build fast, fail fast. So it all depends on what the client is looking for. And if the timelines are too short, there is no point getting on to the field to do research. Because research is a lengthy activity. You have to travel, you have to ensure that you meet the right users, collect the right data point, and come back and see if the data makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, you have to travel again. So, and again, uh, travel is not necessary within your city limits, right? You'll have to travel to a different city to understand a different culture. So, um, we always depend uh, on, um, in such situation, we depend on the desk research, the data we find there, and also the previous project um, uh, data that if we can take and implement it here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, next question. You. Um, Utkarsh, I hope this answers your question. Um, our next question is, how do you go about when you found out that farmers from different cultures have different outlook? I have a question along the same lines. When researching on smart education, students from rural area will have a different outlook on education than a person, say, from an urban area, maybe with relatives in the West. How do you differentiate? Yeah, I think uh, the digital uh, touch points, right, um, it, it depends, uh, like uh, coming back to the farmers uh, or uh, farmers um, in a different uh, place, right, like I mentioned in my uh, talk, uh, the behavior towards digital was so different and even the trust factor was missing in this part of the world, but when you go to Punjab and other part of the world, right, other part of India, right? Um, the uh, farmers were very open to technology because the way they were exposed to uh, some of the other way of farming, like if you look at uh, people from Gujarat and uh, uh, even Kerala for that matter, and um, people from uh, Gujarat, Kerala and Canada, right? Uh, sorry, and uh, Punjab, uh, they have some sort of a Western influence to it because people from the state travel and they have shared knowledge with them. But when it comes to this side of the world, right, that's, um, uh, people accepting technology is still difficult. So uh, when we define a scope, right, um, normally it's, uh, it's the business who uh, dictates some of the features and functionalities. But through research, we tell them what works and what doesn't work. So with FarmRise, the initial uh, scope was to bring in all GPS and extreme technology and stuff. So we made it very clear that it's not going to work in the first MVP. So um, we'll have to go... Um, with a very minimal feature list and then test it out to see whether it works and then improvise on it. Exactly the same approach that Facebook did. Um, very first thing they launched was like and then share. They tested like and share and then they got other um, you know, features and functionality inside. So with education, um, the interesting part of education at this point is uh, no, there is, there'll be no rural or there'll be no tire to tire three. Um, so now, now time has come that uh, everyone has to accept um, um, education on, online so now, or else we will be really left out. So this situation has pushed everyone to uh, accept the fact that uh, some part of the education will definitely be moved online and uh, students, it, it, see at least in farmers, right, they have to invest. Okay, 
or it is they have an option not to do that but in education they do not have an option for example if government pushes all the government school to come online for education right they have no other option they have to do it with farming they still have an option whether to download an application or not download an application so that would be my answer towards education okay great um thanks shruti um our next question is um can you also please uh, explain a bit about conventions local versus global conventions rajesh you want to go on this conventions in terms of design right so um um see there is no global global rule for convention uh, like i like i mentioned we need to identify what is the local culture we're designing to india is very complex that way for uh, the western world is pretty much sorted out um though there are few few nuances here and there which we can always do but in india it will be difficult but there is always a common denominator we need to understand what that common denominator which works for all the cultures and pick those those elements from the common denominators and work there is no um, uh, uh, no way that in uh, india you can go by conventions of an every particular culture then the product will become so complex and uh, making not service purpose in in those kind of situations like anil was mentioning about let's say um, designing for farmers even though the outlook the the, the, the qc the, the the way they dress could be very different but there is a common denominator green for example is a very common denominator in terms of color so if you have to use green as a dominant color you will have to so that's how you figure out what's the common denominator factors and start by that and if you want to further complicate it there are other factors like business calls to be made where we can we can we can further go down and build up and uh, personalize to one particular culture okay um so the next question is from um how to design an international application if every culture is so different this is to anil and rajesh sorry can you repeat that question again so uh ad wants to know how to design an international application if every culture is so different on um, how to design an international application when sorry when every culture is so different uh i think uber is addressing it in a beautiful way uh, if you look at um, the splash screen and uh, initial loading screen of the uber right they have brought in a texture of um, that particular region like when i open uber in um, dubai or any other arab countries right they have the kind of a small little things they bring in to make you feel like it is local we can experiment from a visual angle and also from an experience right if you go to china uh, we'll have to rebuild the entire application so a lot of things that we define for the western and the european world right it doesn't work there their behavior is totally different if you look at the website in china right it is crowded and um, the minimal and that lot of white space and all that that concept doesn't work there and if you look at any website right in china it's pretty crowded and they prefer that way and we will have to uh, uh, accept the fact that in such region we will have to rework reengineer our design but a um, lot of european and uh, western websites work here like for example if you take apple nike adidas or anything it works here because the target audience is different and uh, it depends it's again depends um, years back we had samsung reaching reach out to us to um no alter the ui a little bit so that it works here and uh, then um, we didn't move forward with the project but it was interesting to see that uh, samsung is considering that they want to alter the os operating system of an android uh, to bring in some indian flavor to it so that even uh, the tie to tie three people will connect to it but there is room for improvisation like uh, um uh the, the one way that i mentioned is bringing in local celebrities another one is bringing in local design patterns to make it feel like it is uh, local yeah to add to what i mentioned uh, when i'm looking at an international product uh, trying to function in different countries and different cultures right there the factor is it is not the culture which is going to be very dominant or uh, or localization yes we will have to localize definitely that's a given thing but there is a large restriction we cannot localize it to um, to a greater depth like anil mentioned maybe few screens in the initial thing the way it wishes you that could be done but if you have to go in depth and then match cultures it may not work and it may not also be the business call the business call is if it has to be such an international product 
it has to work at every region and the whole the whole target audience in that particular cultures are also different they may be well read they may be um, quite a few and they will know what what's happening in the international uh, scenario so i think the target audience is slightly different there and uh, culture may not be the number one thing that the, the business will want to hit great so we have another question um how did you design for the farmers who don't trust technology and don't know how to use the app okay interesting question uh, the farmers who do not trust technology the marketing strategy was different uh, for them uh, first is we have to onboard them um, only the farmers who had uh, smartphone um, another interesting fact is their they buying smartphone was totally uh, dependent on uh they getting influenced by other farmers or friends watching some entertainment things on the phone and uh, they also felt that um during um, uh, non farming time they want some sort of an entertainment and that's one of the reason that pushed them to buy a smartphone another one is uh, influencers within the family the younger generation from town or from the city when they go back to the villages and they tell their grandfather or uncle to buy such phones and they keep showing that uh, when you buy the phone you can speak to us you can watch movies and all this stuff these are the factors that uh, push farmers to buy uh, a smartphone but uh, to install an application or anything to do with the smartphone there is an influencer in the village there's there's this person who downloads songs or downloads movies for them on the phone and he shows them how to use it so with farm raise we use the similar kind of uh, approach where instead of spending on media and uh, digital marketing uh, we utilize the same uh, uh, time and the money to uh, create influencers so we had influencers in every village who help farmers to download the application and show initially how to use it another interesting fa- fact about the uh, farm raise application right we use a uh, lot of local database to process the data like for example when you onboard a farmer uh when you know the farmer uh, has got sugarcane as his crop he is not going to change it every day right it's going to be sugarcane for the next couple of months and we try to download as much as information about sugarcane and store it in his local data so that every time he opens he doesn't require a connection to see it so the basic information about the sugarcane is always loaded and when it's connected to the net it brings in more information the news data event and offers so these are the some of the technology extremes that we utilized but for farmers there was a lot of hand holding that was required and the influencer within the village did that for us great thank you anil um we have one more question uh is it a good practice to hinder the experience of secondary or tertiary audience just to make sure that the idea translates to the primary audience perfectly um it 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 depends on the business goals right and uh, what is business trying to do by doing that um but if the research says that we have to do that and there will be an impact on the business then why not these kind these are the kind of experiments that we have to do uh like i was talking about um paytm money right so in the gujarat part of the world right uh, people um love those kind of application and they are expecting uh, the next application to be even more s- simplified but the same application when you come to this side of the world uh, people don't know what it is they don't even know what is kyc so the, the such of fintech applications we have failed majorly during the kyc process uh, so the onboarding is so cumbersome that we require documents and all this stuff so we definitely require to tweak based on the audience like if you go to tier 2 tier 3 we'll have to make some sort of a tweaking over there for those kind of audience to um, accept it and use it seamlessly but again it uh, totally depends on whether the business is ready to take the um end of the day today to to today design uh, we'll have to give an roi right like uh, design is not about beautification it's about bringing um you know the revenues to the business and increasing uh, the user base right so with every project that we finish this uh, the client nowadays i've started asking question like what is the impact of this design so if we have to alter the ui based on the region right then we'll have to submit a report of what is that impact on the business by doing it yeah to add to that i think if you look at the ott platforms be netflix or um, boot or um, amazon right 
Um, they are not being okay. Uh, Netflix's primary audience is pretty much the urban, the English speaking, and stuff like that, right? Dusty, dusty, dusty persona. But if they want to have a larger base of viewership, they need to look at these secondary <laughs> audiences. What did they do, or what they are still yet to do? What did they do right now? They started having subtitles in local languages. They started promoting uh, regional uh, language movies and stuff like that. So there is an audience. There is an audience, uh, and there is a design that needs to cater to secondary and tertiary. If the business aspects expanded, they have reached a saturation um, um, because they don't have any local content. Like for example, if you look at all the serials, the soap operas of, um, of yeah. India. Um, Mood has it. Uh, yeah. doesn't have anything local. So I think it's important we need to uh, have design which is scalable to secondary and tertiary. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, any more questions, guys? Uh, because Kruti internet, uh, she has some uh, the trouble with her internet and. Um, I will take up the question. So the, I think we finished most of it. Yeah, we finished most of the questions here. Um, okay. So cool. That was a great session. Uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining us and um, many more sessions coming. We have planned a um, um, uh, lot of such sessions with uh, other designers and our uh, leads from our team also will be having sharing their experiences with um, the project they've worked on. And uh, thank you so much for being here. And um, thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. Um, thank you, audience, for um, taking the time out and um, and being a part of this uh, webinar. Uh, like we mentioned, like I mentioned, culture is a great source of inspiration for design. Don't miss out on it, especially if you are in India and uh, not look at local culture, look for, look for inspirations. I think you're missing out something. So um, take that into consideration. And uh, thanks once again for, for being a part of this webinar. Stay safe. Um, yeah. I think this session is recorded and uh, we will share the recording with everyone. And uh, once again, wishing you all a world, happy World Design Day and what a day to celebrate. Um, and uh, let's come together to build a better design ecosystem here in India. And my last session was about how to bring policymakers to uh, make to help us out with this entire, um, uh, bringing this entire ecosystem together and also the designers should be heard. Um, so. Let's see. Uh, all the design leaders are making an attempt to bring the policymakers also into this uh, practice. So thank you so much. Stay safe and um, share knowledge. And we'll see you soon. Thank, thank you, guys. I'm in the